friend the ball of fire has decided to join us again today. That means we're still turning. That's good. It'd be a very bad day if the earth wasn't still spinning. So I washed this truck yesterday. Can you tell? <laughs> I think I made it worse. But believe it or not, it does have less dirt on it. <laughs> it was hard to tell yesterday. I thought it was clean. Turns out I was wrong. I'm on my way up to Ashern today. I have no trailer behind me, I'm bobtailing. I'm picking up that heavy load. Remember I talked to you about it yesterday? Have you seen yesterday's video yet? If you'll notice during my vlogs, up in the upper right corner of your screen, I guess it's that side, right? Whichever side, the upper right corner, every once in a while, a little, uh, a little thing will pop up there. It's a link to my past videos. I put the last five videos I've made as card, they call them cards on my video. You can click them and it'll take you to past videos of mine. Also at the end of every one of my videos, there's an end screen where you can click on yesterday's video, the bottom left one, and then there's two other videos that get recommended to you as well. And then you can click my face at the end as well and that'll uh, bring you to the subscribe page. So if you haven't subscribed already, we make new videos as we're trucking around Southern Manitoba here. Uh, we used to do trucking across North America, Canada and the US. And uh, if you want to know why we're doing this now, in the description of this video and the description of all of my recent videos, it explains everything, what we're doing, who we are, and where we are. And it'll catch you up a little bit. So I'm on my way up to Asher in about two hours north, going to pick up this heavy load. It has a Jeep on it. I'm going to show you what that's all about. And then I have to follow a specific route to Pine Falls, Manitoba. Because I have a permitted load for being overweight, I have to follow this strict route. It's the long way around, and this trailer can only go a maximum of 90 kilometers an hour or 55 miles an hour. So I'll see you when we're up there. It's gonna be interesting. It's uh, my first time doing something like this. It's a first for everything. We do all kinds of stuff, so every day is a new adventure. We're just going around Winnipeg right now. I'll see you up north. We're up here, north of Ashern. We gotta go down this gravel road for about four miles. That's a big tire, wow. And we gotta drag this big heavy beast of a machine out of a trailer or whatever it is out of here. Some serious wildlands up here. got my GPS guiding me in. The guys that worked this morning uh, gave me directions. But until I see it on Google Maps, I don't know. Directions, I guess, like turn left at this place, left at that place, they, they sort of fade from memory. But once I see it on Google Maps, and then I can just tell the GPS to bring me there and make sure you double check that it's a truck route. And this is the road I'm supposed to take. Don't just blindly trust the GPS. That is the best way of getting to places, as long as you're careful about it. Looks like it's about two miles up yet. We're coming up to a mile road here. In the countryside of Manitoba, the, mi uh, the mile roads, the roads, the grid roads are all uh, cut into quarter or I mean uh, square mile sections. Canada up until what, the 60s was it or 70s? We were actually just like the US, miles an hour. Everything was measured in miles, and for some reason we changed to the metric system. And I think we I think we assumed the Americans were gonna do the same thing, and they tried it, and it didn't work there. So uh, we had already switched over, and now we're like, ah, huh, I guess this is gonna be confusing from now on. Oh yeah, that's a mile road, and one more mile ahead of us, there's another mile road, and it's a grid pattern like that all across the prairies of Canada. That's why you can always tell if a person is from the countryside of Canada, because we still talk in miles. It's three miles, and then make a right, and head one mile up, and then make a left. Whereas in the city, they're all pretty much just kilometers. So I'm a mixture of both. I'm uh, a bilingual when it comes to measurements, but only <laughs> I only speak English, so what is that, monolingual? 
with actual language, bi-measurmental. I'm bi-measurmental. I can do both. All right, so we're all hooked up here. I'm ready to go. There's 42,000 kilograms hooked up to me, which like I said yesterday and before, it's about 93,000 pounds. We've got her hooked up to the Jeep right here. This is the Jeep underneath here. You see this connects to my truck and goes down to there. It gives me an extra axle here. See, so now I have three axles here. And then on the Jeep is another fifth wheel that connects to the trailer. This is a pretty small Jeep. Some Jeeps are bigger with two axles or three axles. And then uh, it's all the way back here. Triaxle in the back. And I am permitted for this weight, so I can legally go, but I have to follow their special routes for it. And I can't go faster than 90 kilometers an hour at any time. So we better head out. We got quite a bit of a drive today, especially at 90 kilometers an hour. It's going to be fun, though. Something new, but who am I kidding though, right? It's a, it's a trailer attached to a trailer. A little mini trailer attached to a big heavy trailer. The reason for that Jeep in there is just to distribute the weight a little better so that there's not so much weight straight down onto the asphalt so that uh, it's a little easier on the roads. All right, we got a long way to go. Ooh, she's heavy. Oh, I can feel that. Let's pull her out of the bush. We will be making use of all the gears today. Got my permit right here beside me. Oh, I gotta get up through this narrow little driveway here. Good times, good times. I'm gonna roll up my window so that I can try not, oops, that's right, gotta start in first gear. We have a heavy load. Just finished saying we gotta use all our gears. for sure it's gonna be a smooth ride today the heavier you are the more of like a boat you are just floating down the highway or floating down the back roads for now <laughs> I'm not gonna go too fast down here I'm limited like I said to 90 kilometers an hour and that's not bad the bigger ones like this that we pull uh, you're limited to 70 kilometers an hour. So 90 is 55 miles an hour. 70 kilometers an hour is about 45 miles an hour. And that's as fast as you can go with most of these things. So uh, I got a smaller one. There's heavier, bigger ones out there. Maybe next time we'll have one of the big, big ones. And then it's 70 kilometers an hour, 45 mile an hour the whole way. You just got big signs and a beacon on the back saying, hey, I'm a slow moving vehicle. I can't go any faster. And the reason we can't go any faster is uh, so that the, uh, well, because you're so heavy for one. And also the equipment that we're pulling isn't supposed to be, uh, you know, shaking too much. Like these washboards here, that's why I'm going nice and slow. But it's also, this whole trailer's on air ride suspension. Except for the Jeep in the front. So that smooths it out quite a bit already. As long as you make sure that uh, all of your suspension is properly properly raised because when you drop these trailers you have to uh 
release the air in the bags of the trailer every time. So every time you hook up to one, you gotta remember to make sure those airbags in the trailer are filled up. You don't wanna be pulling this heavy of a load with no air in the suspension. That's just like metal on metal banging down the road. You're gonna damage something and break something very expensive very quickly. But the good news is we're not wide. So I don't need any signage or flags. We're just heavy. My gross weight is uh, probably close to 100,000 pounds right now. So it's not like we're the heaviest of the heavy. You know what I mean. Heavier than I'm used to. Heavier than the average day. I know super bee haulers are laughing at me right now. <laughs> That's okay. It sure is heavy though. It takes me a while to get up to 90 kilometers an hour. So no rush, just slowly. It feels like I'm floating, just floating my way up there. Giving ourselves plenty of space to stop at stop signs and corners. No rush today. Well, it's always a rush. You know, everybody wants everything yesterday. So in that sense, yeah, we're always rushed, but it's a controlled rush today. <laughs> you don't want to rush too much with a lot of weight behind you. Got to do a little bit of off-roading here. I've got to go around here and in that far gate facing this way. Let's lock our diffs. Okay, this is going to be bumpy, guys going to be bumpy very very bumpy <laughs> this is where they told me to go I know what that looked like. Don't worry, nothing bad happened. <laughs> the camera battery died right at the exact right moment. And I looked at the footage after that. <laughs> Looks like it just went black. <laughs> Let me get rid of that fisheye lens for you. Right up over there. So I went around the back and then came through here and then backed it up there. I did have to back it up a little ways, but uh, at least I didn't have to back it across the street here. That was, uh, it's a little tricky with the Jeep. I was hoping to show that, but I had to charge you guys up a little bit because you know me, perfect timing for everything, right? But you did get the off-roading bit, so that was fun, you know? It's always an adventure. Hey, what else? Gotta back, get back to the yard now. Uh, 
bobtailing. Got all my paperwork over here. Got my nice little my table. Oh, I got a leaf. Is that lucky? There's a leaf on my table. See, I built this as the weasel bed, right? But when the weasel's not with me, he doesn't come with me that every day because he's retired. But uh, this is a nice, nice table right here for my stuff. You know, I mostly put it over there, anyways. Or it's nice just to lean on. Many different, many different things. One second, someone wants to talk to me bad enough that they wanted to send me. <gasps> it's my wife. Oh yeah, we got new dog beds for Diesel and Chevy. Big, massive dog beds, and one was supposed to arrive today. So she was just letting me know. We're excited. Okay, it's an hour and a half back, so that was my day today. I was just moving that across the, the inner lake, pretty much, of Manitoba. And uh, I'll finish off here with some of the scenic footage through the countryside as I head back to the yard. It's about an hour and a half drive back. I'll see you there. sun's pretty low in the sky over there already started over there you'll notice that in the mornings now when i get here the sun's not even up not too long ago the sun was already about over there right in the mornings now you'll also notice that when the sun does come up here when you see it in my videos you'll notice that it comes up further that way as we're getting closer and closer to winter solstice i know i don't want to say it yet it's a long ways away don't freak out yet long ways away but on winter solstice, the sun's gonna rise way over there, just boop above the horizon over there and set over there. Right? Now it's over there. So, summertime. <laughs> summertime rises over there, goes through the sky like this, and then sets over there. Wintertime rises over there, and then sets over there. It's interesting. I know I talk about this like at least once a week. It's the most fascinating thing to me. And I live here. I get to see it year after year after year. And every time I'm just like, wow. Seasons. I couldn't imagine living in a climate somewhere like further south near the equator where they don't have seasons, where it's just the same all year round. Always the same. Four distinct seasons. Very distinct in Manitoba. <laughs> We are now just entering the fall or the autumn season. Life is fun, isn't it? I just love life. Hi guys. <laughs> don't, don't. Yesterday you punched me. You punched me and you scratched my nipple. Not today. Not today. You keep those paws to yourself. Our little nipple scratchers. Almost ripped it right off, man. How's it going, guys? <laughs> I gotta poop again. Is that all I'm good for? Just letting you poop? Hey, Frank, you wanna say hi? After I poop. Oh. Now! <laughs> I should have eaten. 
You sit. Oh, he's such a good boy. Oh, I pulled a big heavy trailer today, guys. It was a big heavy one. Heaviest one I pulled in a long time. It was lots of fun. Wanna go outside now? Where's your brother? Where's the wiener? 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 Oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> All right, guys, come on. Come on. I'll get the shovel. All right, you bring the rest. I'll bring the shovel. Diesel, hey. He went to go grab a drink of water real quick. We all gotta wait for Diesel, all right? Diesel, the whole family's waiting. He's grabbing water. I can hear him slurpsing over there. There he is, a slurpy weasel. Okay, all right, come on guys. This way, this way, Frank, over here. And once again, Britt is working late. Uh, our schedules are sort of, well, not too, too much of the opposite. She just works a little more into the evening than I do. I'm usually home mm, a couple hours before her. So uh, I would like to include her in more of the videos. She has mentioned too that she misses you guys, that she wants to be in them more often. So it's not like she's avoiding you and I'm not avoiding putting her in here. It's just usually by the time she gets home, I've got all the footage on the computer already and getting ready for bed. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me today. It was fun. Uh, let me know if you've ever hauled anything like that before and what's the heaviest load that you have ever pulled? I want to know down below. That way I know that you watched right to the end, okay? If you, if you don't drive truck, just say, no, nah, I don't drive trucks. But if you do, let me know the heaviest load, okay? That way I'll know how many people made it to the end. <laughs>